Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how you can easily exclude fields from any core or universal PDF template. For this demonstration uh, we're going to look at an e-commerce form uh, that has a couple of product fields, uh, contact information, billing and shipping address, uh, shipping type, payment method, uh, and then a newsletter sign up checkbox and a hidden um, field used to track the, uh, the inbound um, location or the user um, which gets populated using um, a URL parameter. So if we're posting the link on Facebook, the URL parameter would have a, a Facebook uh, marked and if it was in a newsletter, it'd, it'd have a newsletter marked. Uh, so we've already got a PDF set up on the form. It's using one of our Paid Universal Templates formula, and this is what it looks like um, out of the box. So, um, name and email up top, billing, shipping, um, payment type, newsletter, sign up. Um, if so, if it was checked, uh, then the inbound location and the product details at the bottom. You can see here, uh, newsletter sign up. Um, it's got the, the label here we use for that checkbox. It doesn't really make sense here um, like this. So we're going to exclude it. Um, and we may want to exclude the inbound locations um, field as well. Uh, there be a challenge with that um, using the, the first technique I'm going to show you. Uh, but we will be able to remove it with the, the second technique. So uh, let's have a look at the first technique, uh, which is available in the, the free version of Gravity PDF, uh, which is using a CSS class. So we'll go to the form editor. I'm going to scroll down to our field. See um, the checkbox here. So Gravity PDF is displaying that label. Um, and it doesn't really make sense in the context of the PDF um, to display that label, so we'll just remove it for now. We'll go to Appearance, and under Custom CSS Class, we're going to type the words ex or the text exclude. Um, now, if you had another class there already, maybe you're using a, a Ready class from an earlier version of Gravity Forms. Um, your field might already look like this. You can just put a space there and then put the word exclude after that. Um, we'll just put the CSS class exclude there, hit update on our form, and then we'll have a look at our PDF again. So I expect now that our newsletter sign up field is going to be removed. Excellent. We probably don't need the payment method either. We can remove, um, we can remove that. And we'll do the same action again. We'll go down to payment method, to the radio button, appearance, and we'll just put exclude here as well. Um, now before I, I save and um, we look at the PDF again, uh, I'm going to click on this hidden field. So I would like to remove it, but Gravity Forms doesn't have um, support for a CSS class on the hidden field. Um, so we cannot uh, include it. Um, and with the product fields as well, um, because they're grouped at the end of the PDF in an order table, um, by default, uh, using exclude on them won't actually remove them from uh, the PDF. So I will include that class there for the moment. Um, hit update and just show you that when I refresh that product still going to display in the order table at the end. Um, but the uh, the credit the, the payment type has been removed which is credit card. Um, now we've already talked about two of the limitations which is they don't work with hidden fields and they don't work with product fields by default. Um, another 
limitation to keep in mind is if you have multiple PDFs configured on the same form, I'll just duplicate this invoice uh, and we'll pick a different template. We'll do cellulose. Uh, actually, we might do save it for this one. Okay. Um, if you have multiple PDFs on the form uh, and are using the exclude method, it will exclude the exact same fields um, in both of them. So this one's missing the, um, the payment method and the newsletter type um, as well, which gives you, so it gives you less control basically. Um, now, there is a way to solve all these problems um, and that is using the uh, Core Booster extension, which is a paid add-on for Gravity PDF. Um, and what that does is it has an option and you can control exactly what fields are included in, the, um, in each individual PDF, which means that you can have uh, multiple PDFs set up on the form, each displaying different data. And where that's useful is um, if you wanted to send those PDFs to different departments in your organization, for example, um, we could set up one PDF to go to marketing, another PDF to go to um, the warehouse for shipping, um, and another PDF to go to accounts. Um, I'm going to delete this first one and we'll go edit, sorry, the second one, and we'll go edit the first one we had set up. Um, now, when the Core Booster add on is enabled, uh, that exclude CSS class will no longer work. Um, it's all controlled through this new setting that gets added under the template section called filter fields. I've got a toggle here to enable it. Um, and then we can select fields on the left so they're included on the right. Um, so I'll add all fields for the moment. I'm gonna um, include all the fields uh, that are here and I want to get rid of inbound location, newsletter sign up, uh, credit card field, payment method. So I'll just include the um, products, um, contact info, and billing and shipping um, details. Then I'm, I'll hit update. We'll go have a look at that PDF now. We've got a uh, name, email, billing, shipping, uh, and the order at the bottom here. Now I mentioned it um, solves all those problems with the exclude class, um, which includes the, um, the ability to remove products. Um, and to do that, we need to ungroup these products from this table. So um, by default, all the products, no matter where they are in the form, they're pulled out of, of context and they're placed together in an order table at the end, which is exactly how Gravity Forms handles it um, when, it's, when you're viewing the entry on the entry details page. Um, but if we want more control over those products, we can ungroup these fields from the order table and they get placed in the position um, they are in the form editor. Uh, and once that's done, you can show and hide uh, those fields. So I will ungroup those products. Uh, and then I have the option now to um, add or remove them. So I might just add one of the products and leave the other one disabled and we'll get rid of the billing and shipping. This has name, email and, and product in the PDF now. You can see there's our, there's our product and price and name and email. And this is in the order that appears, appears in the form. So we didn't want it first. We wanted it after name and email. We could adjust the position in the, the form editor here. We could move it, move it down. 
um, to below the name and email. Um, and that will adjust where it is in the PDF. Make sure that's there. Yep. Uh, now, if we refresh, it's going to be below name and email. So um, just keep in mind that the, the positioning in the PDF matches the positioning in the form editor, um, and and really have a think about that when you're designing the um, the gravity form. Um, so that's on one particular PDF now, um, and we'll set up a new one with. Uh, different uh, fields showing. Let's do we'll do Rubik's for this one. Uh, call this marketing information. Uh, so we'll head down to the template section now and right down past header and footer. So you can if you have a look at our earlier videos, you can add logos and things, but we won't cover that in this video. We'll enable the filter fields again. We want the name, email. We'll get um, shipping and billing as well. Um, payment method, newsletter sign up, and inbound location. Um, all the all the info a marketing department might want. Um, for uh, a particular customer. Now, we'll just save that first. That's the PDF. Uh, now, if you wanted it to automatically go to the marketing department, you would set up a, a marketing notification and, and you would enable the um, that under the notification section. So when the form is submitted, the PDF is automatically attached to that marketing notification. Um, we did cover that in an earlier video, so I won't cover it here today. Um, but that's an option when you're setting this up. I'll go view this marketing information PDF. Uh, and includes all that information we selected. It also includes the, the product table. Um, we don't want that going to the marketing department. Um, any products. So we're going to turn off that order table, um, which can be done with the core booster add-on. And this newsletter sign up, um, instead of the label showing, um, which is the question, would you like to sign up? I want the, the value, which is yes. Yes, I want to show up. Um, and I'll just show you that when we go to the form editor. Under the checkbox here. So the label I've got is, would you like to sign up to the newsletter? And the value is, is yes which um, makes much more sense uh, in the context of the PDF. So to do that, we'll go to PDFs, go to this second one, edit. We'll scroll down, we'll first turn off that um, product table, so no products under group products here. And for option field display, we're going to select show value instead of show label in update now. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one too. Third time's lucky. Uh, so now when I refresh, we should have um, the newsletter sign up showing me the value, which would be yes, and this order table um, removed. So I'll refresh now. Order table gone. Newsletter sign up. Yes, hey, we're signing up. Um, much more intuitive to the, the receiver of this document, um, the action that was taken by that particular by that particular user. Um, you could also use a, a radio button instead of a, a checkbox, yes or no. Um, but checkboxes seem to be the, the way a lot of people are uh, asking for um, a newsletter sign up. Um, whether people want to, want to do a sign up or not. Um, so that's just one, one way you can control how that how that looks when you're um when you're including or excluding them. 
um, using the, the Core Booster add-on. Uh, and that covers how to exclude fields uh, using the Core Free um, version of Grabber UPDF and with the paid extension um, Core Booster add-on, um, which as you saw, gives you significantly more control over um, the output of your PDFs.